Welcome to this energy update for December 2021. Well, what a month. We're going to look at the eclipse, the solar eclipse. We're going to be uh, looking at the key themes of freedom, of sovereignty, of um, power and truth. So, first of all, if you don't know who I am, my name is Chloe Cousins and I support spiritually awakening souls uh, through energy transmissions, through lighting codements, through my crystal Merkaba grid journeys and also my holographic blueprint templating process to empower themselves, to you know, express more of their divinity and shine their light out into the world. So let's first of all look at these key themes and then I also have some recommendations for you for this month. So the first thing I want to say is that we have now come into a very, um, there's a lot of energy coming down onto the planet in month right now there's a huge amount of light available and through that process because we live in a universe uh, uh, of duality there is naturally a lot of collapse a lot of the old that is crumbling and that is within us so old paradigms, old ways of being, perceptions, negativity, emotions, things that no longer serve us on our ascension journey, that is really falling away. And as the, we see on the inner levels is reflected on the outer levels, right? So we're also seeing a huge rumbling of 3D systems, 3D ways of being, 3D institutions, organizations, the way that the world had been set up to reflect that 3D reality. Well, now we're in the 5D um, grid as it were. So what that means is that anything that is not resonating at that higher frequency cannot be sustained. Now often, and you'll probably experience that within your own, you know, your own energetic system, often when something is falling away, often our natural response can be to kind of hold on even tighter, right? <laughs> because of the, it's actually just because of fear, right? The fear of the change, the fear of the new, um, and not wanting to make that shift either consciously or subconsciously into the new. And so often what can happen is that you kind of within ourselves create more control. And that's what we're seeing on an outer level is as the old systems are, are kind of really they're falling away right and what that means is that often there's more they, you're, there's more control and more restriction in a kind of last ditch attempt to try and keep everything the same or move into a direction that they want things to move in and it's just not sustainable and so this is what we're, we're seeing. So when we have an eclipse, an eclipse is really like a quantum leap. It's a portal. It's a gateway for a huge shift that can come in very, very quickly. So with eclipses, this particular eclipse was a solar eclipse that was on the 4th of December. Um, this kind of portal is over the next six months. So this is what we're expecting to see happening over the next six months. It could come quicker, could take a bit longer, because we've all had that free will within that as well. But often it can be sudden. It can come in very, very quickly. Now, this solar eclipse was over a new moon. So what that means is it's a massive quantum leap potentiality 
four new beginnings, which is super, super exciting. But of course, any new, any new beginning naturally means there's a death, there's a release, there's a letting go. So we see that on the inner and we see that on the outer, right? In our outer reality. So when those new beginnings come in, like I said, it can feel a little bit challenging um, if we weren't expecting it, if we didn't realize it was coming in. And even if we do know it's coming in, it can still be um, challenging and feel a little intense. So my first recommendation is that the more you can anchor in to what I call your new earth template, um, your highest self vision for you, for those around you, for the world. The more that you can anchor into that when everywhere else is feeling quite chaotic and turbulent, you're going to find it so much easier to navigate. So that would be my first recommendation is to literally sit down, meditate, or go for a walk in nature, do, or, or before, you know, when you go to bed at night, ask for more clarity, um, ask your guides, your higher self, to give you a, a bigger picture vision. Um, or if you know what that already is, make sure that you've written it down, made it more anchored, um, just by writing it down really supports you as well. But almost literally have it on your phone, write it around so that you're constantly seeing it, remembering it, so that when you kind of get caught up in, in the ripple, you can bring yourself back to center, come back into a state of peace and calm so that you can start co-creating from that position and not from the position of fear. Because guess what? If you just lock into the fear, if you lock into the turbulence, you're just going to co-create more and more of that. So your mastery comes from consistently one being aware when you're out of sync when you're getting a little bit like into that fear and then bringing yourself back as quickly as possible back into that inner state and so i feel um having those you know that understanding of what it is you want to co-create what you want to see in the outer world and what you want to feel and what you want to be who you want to be keep coming back into that now this is the one of the things that um i've really been working with with my community and i got guided i think it was about two three weeks ago maybe a bit longer i lose track of all time <laughs> two three weeks ago was the north star vision quest and that was really working with the north star energy which is polaris at the moment connecting to that so that you could download any perceptions insights revelations so that and then bring it into some sort of concrete form as it write it down and then work with that so that you have almost like a north star vision mantra for yourself so i will put the uh, link to that at the bottom if, if that's something that you feel drawn to doing especially now i feel right now for for this month it's getting all these um anchors in place for yourself because because the more you practice it um with the little triggers as the triggers get bigger which i'm going to talk about in a moment as the triggers get bigger you'll have practice it's like muscle it's like going to the gym right so so that's really really important so this solo clips is going to take you for the next six months and i really feel when you're looking at the astrology when i've looked at the cards when i've looked at everything and even the astrology for next year there there's going to be a lot of shifts let's put it that way it's like we're right at that pivot point over these next six months so you know being really on your inner game being really connected to your highest self being really clear 
on your vision that you want for the new earth template, that is what is going to support you through all of the turbulence that we're going to see really and more and more collapse. So a part of that is what I was seeing this month and when we look at the Sagittarius theme is around truth. So as part of this 3D game that we will be playing for hundreds and thousands of years, it's like we've been plugged in, I said the best way I can describe it, it's like we've been plugged in to a specific matrix that has been very, very limited. And so it's kept us at a, at a locked in at a lower frequency. And so we've all had this kind of programming, whether it's conscious or subconscious, that's within our energetic system. And what we're literally having to do is just keep on unplugging all those perceptions, all those paradigms, all those ways, whether they're really obvious or really sneaky, right? Where we've given away our power. Now, we can give our power away on so many levels, um, whether it's with e, we give our uh, power away to our ego, to um, organizations, authority figures, um, to other people, in so many different ways. But I'm going to talk a bit more about that when I look at the sovereignty. But just to know that we have so much kind of programming that we're needing to clear. Now, in that clearing process, different truths will start to reveal themselves to you. And as that happens, it can be quite destabilizing because what you believe to be true, suddenly or over a matter of a few days or a couple of months, often when there's a kind of crisis point often, um, things start to become aware. And we call that like a spiritual awakening, but it's not like we just have one spiritual awakening, right? It's like we have, it's like cycles within cycles within cycles as we wake up to a whole new level of being and seeing. So a lot of it's to do with our perception and then shifting our identity so there's an alignment between what we're perceiving and who we are being. That is really, really important and really key in all of that. So as those layers keep on peeling back and they can come from an internal crisis, right? Or they can be from an outside trigger that then triggers us where we have to look at things differently. Now, it's interesting that when we look at the astrology for this month, there is this component component of truths and secrets being revealed. So it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to play on an outer level uh, within your world, but also globally, and how that may push you to widen your perception, to look at things differently and reassemble within your consciousness certain things, right? And so again, as you're going through that, it can be quite destabilizing. So the more that you have an anchor um, for yourself, the more that's going to support you. And so that anchor really needs to be, I would suggest, you know, that, that, that highest vision for yourself, for, for, for what you like to birth in the world, i.e. stay focused on what it is you wish to co-create and not on all the, the panic, the fear, the collapse. Okay? And so it's a consistent process of having to recalibrate and keep on realigning as more things reveal themselves you then need to recalibrate but then don't get go down the rabbit hole of going into fear and just keep bringing yourself back in what it is you wish to co-create because ultimately on a really higher big picture vision this whole process is really a huge awakening 
for each one of us on many, many different levels. It doesn't matter where you are in your consciousness. It doesn't matter, you know, what you believe and, and, and where you're resonating at. There is always a bigger space, a higher space, a more elevated space for you to be birthed into right? So no one is exempt. <laughs> no one is exempt in that process. So that would be one of the, again, that recommendation of just keep bringing yourself back as things open up, as more awareness, as more truths reveal themselves. Um, just come back and to what it is that you wish to see and, and co-create into, into the world. Now, a big part of this is also going to be around judgment. And so what I mean by that is that judgment, whether it's self-judgment, whether you judge yourself for the decisions you've taken or, or for, you know, how could you, for example, it could be as a truth is revealed, you then ask, oh my goodness, how could I have thought like that? How could I have been fooled? Why did I believe this? When now you can see a bigger picture. Well, the very fact that you then judge yourself in that actually locks you in into that so if you find yourself at that you know at that and then oh my goodness how could I have done that you know I'm such an awful person I thought I was spiritual and yet how could I have bought into that the thing to do is just to send yourself love and just say it is amazing that now you can see something now you are aware of it that is a blessing that is an opportunity thank you to myself for seeing it and being made aware of it because now i can shift it right you cannot shift something if you cannot see it if you cannot connect into it right so it's a blessing and you know honor yourself congratulate yourself for seeing it then you can shift it and move on the biggest part is just even becoming conscious of it also, it could be that you could be judging others in this process. Again, if you are judging others in that process, bring it back to yourself, have a look within yourself, where is it that maybe you are judging yourself somewhere along the line, but also know if you project out to others and judge them, is it maybe that you're feeling disempowered? Are you feeling that somehow because they're behaving in that way or whatever they're thinking is impacting you? Again, you're leaking energy. You are at one level giving your power away. So by judging that other person, it's locking you in at a lower vibration and it is not serving you at all. So literally go into your heart, bless that person, detach energetically from that so that you can move into a higher vibration and hold a, a higher frequency in all of that. So let's now move into what I feel is one of the biggest aspects that we're going to, that we have already seen play out now for the last couple of years anyway, but it's kind of almost intensifying and will carry on for quite a few number of years. And this is all around sovereignty. It's all around power. It's all around your inner power and your sovereignty, right? Now, the reason we're seeing all of this playing out is that because globally, we are under the influence of Chiron in Aries. And Chiron in Aries is all around power. It's all around empowerment. It's all around who am I and about how you run your energy, the thoughts and your feelings. It's all around abuse of power, right? And, and you know, all the themes around that. Now, we've already seen that playing out and it is now playing out hugely and will continue um, as these secrets, as these things will come up within your awareness. And so we're all being called, each one of us is being called to, to go within and be really clear on how we run our energy, how we think and we feel on a moment-to-moment -moment level. And is there a different way 
that we can run our energy that is more empowering? Is there a different way that you can feel and think? A different perception that you can um, embody that is more empowering for you? And so in all of that, often what happens when we're in empowerment journey is that we get to be get shown where we are disempowered. Right? So when I repeat that, when we are in a empowerment journey, we get to see, we get to be shown where we are disempowered. Okay? So it's like where are you giving your power away? right? Where are you giving your power away? And here's another question. Um, What is it that you stand for? Right? Where are you not in your power and enabling yourself to release that as much as you can in the moment? So there is a difference between standing in your power, standing in your sovereignty and battling over something. And this is the distinction that I feel is really important. So when you are battling something, you're going into that situation or into that circumstance or into that aspect from a position of disempowerment. As in, there's something to battle, there's something to fight. Right? Whereas, if you go within and in work within and stand in your truth, stand in your light, and then from that position, decide what action to take. It's a very, very, you're going into that situation in a, in such a stronger energetic position, right? So the, on the outside, the action could look very similar. The action could be like you, you're speaking a truth to somebody or you're, I don't know, you're, you're, you're going on a, uh, on a march or whatever it is you're doing. But if you're going from the position of, I am in my truth, I am speaking my truth and I am sovereign in that. It's so that the energy that you hold within that is so much more powerful than if you're going into that situation from, oh my God, I feel so out of control. I have no control over anything. And I've got to get as much power as I can back. Very, very different. And so whenever I feel what this is going on, and this is very much linked to the whole freedom that we're looking at right now, is that always start from the position of going within first, right? Because it's an inner game. So in, so always, always, when you feel those triggers, whether they're internal triggers or external triggers, whatever those external triggers are, and it's making you feel like you're, you're losing power, it's feeling like you're feeling restricted, like you haven't got your freedom, whatever it's, it's triggering you, go within first and clear within yourself those possession those um perceptions so that you can feel strong you can feel in your truth you feel clear and in alignment with your sovereignty and then from that position from that alignment then take action right? So to me, um, it's really about a huge opportunity for each one of us to clear, you know how I talked about this, like this old matrix and that, all that, that, that old patterning, that is the quickest way to clear that, those old patterning within yourself, right? Because you get the trigger, okay, go within, where is it within myself? What perceptions am I holding? What thoughts, what emotions 
Am I feeling that is not really in alignment with the truth of who I am? And it's doing that internal inquiry, clearing that within yourself first is what is going to create the empowerment. Because if you just, as a knee-jerk reaction, just just go out there and and blame and and you know just direct that energy out there you lose the opportunity to clear that 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 patterning that perception within yourself so i i hope that i hope that makes sense um for you so My recommendations for you are one, get really clear on what it is you wish to co-create in your world and have that around, you know, write it down, you know, make it into a mantra, um, have it around so that you constantly and continually realign it to it. Whenever you feel triggered around issues around freedom, around your sovereignty, around power, Um, around truth always first bring it back to yourself and look within yourself in terms of any perceptions any feelings that you just need to clear within yourself and then from that position take action if you feel guided to take action and then if for those that um, are temple members so I have a, a spiritual membership site of hundreds of people, beautiful, um, spiritually awakening souls in there. And I've been running this now for about four or five years. And so every month I, I facilitate healing and a sacred circle of fire for, for clearing. And also there's a, a ton of frequency meditations there and spiritual workshops to support people literally 24 seven. So anytime they need that recalibration, that realignment, they can, they can pop on one of these transmissions, um, activations, and they can listen to it. And so here are some of the, if you're a temple member, here are some of the recommendations for you. So my first recommendation would be the meditation standing in your light. That's going to really help you recalibrate and realign and connect to your inner power. This is something, this is a meditation I feel that a lot of people are going to be wanting to use consistently as they keep this as those outer triggers as the collapse keeps on happening it's going to be a lot more outer triggers for us in that process also um i facilitated a crystal merkle bugwood journey to uluru so uluru is the world chakra for the solar plexus and so that would be one of my recommendations would be to listen to that journey. I think it's about an hour and a half to two hours long. There's a Merkaba journey in there. And what these journeys do is that they take you to Uluru energetically um, and then take you to uh, a specific portal, a specific gateway so that you can travel interdimensionally and connect to keys and codes that are at that specific portal. And that particular journey is all around spiritual empowerment because when it comes to your sovereignty when it comes to power there are many different types of power right you can have personal power you can have professional power and you can also have spiritual power right and so i feel globally we are being uh given the opportunity to really work at a very very deep level on all those aspects of power okay then so i will i will put the links down um there so you can connect in if you want to and also if you would like to join my newsletter as well okay take care bye